Klai Mohammed, the Minister of Information and Culture, says President Muhammad Buhari has put Nigeria on an irreversible road to sustainable development in the past one year of his re-election. The minister, who made the call at a news conference on Friday in Abuja to mark the first anniversary of the second term of the president, said that the past one year had been momentous, adding that never in the history of Nigeria had so many positive steps been taken in so short a time. Now, to analyze this, we have Innocent Chukuma, who is the director for Ford Foundation, Regional Director, West Africa. Good morning, Mr. Chukuma. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on News on the Hour. Now, let's go straight to the matter. It's five years down the line. Uh, that's uh, the first term and the second term. And the federal government, through the Minister of Information uh, you know, and Culture, Lai Mohammed, said President Muhammad Buhari, in his words, has put the country on an irreversible road to development in the last one year. What's your assessment so far? There is no doubt that the government has made progress in a number of areas. But it has also recorded missed opportunities. And more importantly now is to look at the three remaining years as an opportunity to reset on areas it didn't do well these past five years. If we focus for a moment on the areas the government has performed well, one would be the introduction of the single treasury account, which in one force we brought together over a thousand different accounts that different MDAs operated into one single account, which has helped the government in plugging a number of uh, loopholes that, uh, you know, in previous eras were used by politicians and political jobbers to essentially flex the government. If you also look at the recovery of uh, looted funds in previous government, and also using those funds to fund the social investment and social protection program of the government. It has done well. The determination of government to complete a number of national infrastructural projects such as roads, bridges, and railways are all commendable. However, there are a number of areas one expected the government would have done well, which uh, are missed opportunities. One was if you look at the inaugural speech of President Buhari, in 2015. There was a sound bite that he used that resonated across Nigeria. And what was that? I will not be anyone's, I belong to no one, I belong to everyone. Mm -hmm. Which is a rallying call for all Nigerians to come together and work together. And what happened? A few months down the line, the whole thing began to fizzle. Essentially on September 1, 2015, when Garba Shehu the then, uh, who is still now the spokesperson of the president, said that the covenant the president used in com, uh, com, uh, uh, contesting and campaigning, which was titled The Covenant with Nigeria, where he listed what he would do over the, his administration and also the first 100 days uh, in office. They said they, they, they dismissed that, government, uh, that document, saying it was a product of the media committee mm -hmm. of the PDP of uh, ABC, which was when, where the problem started. And then you follow it up with inspiring. Let's face it, what is the role of a president? Is to inspire the people, to bring big things, and to go and do it in the best of times. And also to motivate them to stay the course when the chips are down, such as the period now we are facing coronavirus. But all the communication we keep getting from the president or people around him are divisive. You know, yeah, let's face it, the, government, the president, amongst his high points, does not include, he's not a connector, he's not a Mervyn, he's not a salesperson. So one expected him to bring people who bring these qualities to the government. But what do we have? Are people who go to double down and reinforce what I call reclusive and monarchical style of leadership. And that's why today the president and the government is alienated. So on the period of the fifth anniversary, I would plead with the government to go back to look at that government, that document called My Covenant with Nigeria, and ask itself, has it fulfilled it? In the three cardinal areas that it pointed out, inclusive economy. Today, we still have an economy dominated by oligarchs. We don't have the SMEs who are the, you know, the breakers of new grounds in a system because the policy environment is not enabling. The security system, which he said he will solve in a matter of months, 
Now, are we secured now than we were in 2015? The jury is still out. Many Nigerians in many communities across the country are fleeing their homelands. Many agricultural lands are not being cultivated. This is farming season. And if they are not being cultivated, cultivated because of insecurity, down the line we are going to have food security problem. But we have an opportunity of these three years. The government, the president needs to look around him. Do I have the kind of people that will help me deliver? He has started on a good note. The uh, new chief of staff, who is a, an acclaimed world diplomat, if he has the, the, the space to do the work, he will help and contribute in moving Nigeria forward. We need a few more of those kind of appointments if we really want to come here, come to in 2023 and say the government has really left a good legacy mm -hmm. for which people will be, talk about it for many years to come. All right. Let, let's take a look again a bit more on uh, national security. I know you're very passionate in terms of issues that have to do with uh, security, you know, policing and the, the sort of security outfit that we have in this country. As a Nigerian, you know, are you, do you feel safe that, yes, our security apparatus are protecting the people or are we at a place where we are not certain what is going on? I must say that the security system of the country leaves very much to be desired. And even the system the government inherited, it has not improved upon it. In the security services all over the world, people who are in it look for opportunities of growth in their career, which motivates them to put in their best. But over the past five years, we have people who should have retired. They have completed their tenure of office. Instead of letting them go to make ways for new brain, new ideas to rise through the rank and they lead the sectors, we still have these people in place. And another thing the government seems to be doing is believing that we can solve the security problem of the country by simply increasing security capacity. Security or insecurity is a symptom of a deeper problem, underlying prop social problems. A situation where we have the kind of inequality, the level of inequality we have in this country, you cannot have a peace. A situation where government is perceived to be running exclusive rather than inclusive government, you cannot have a security. A situation where over 20% of young people in this country, in fact, the, the figures, depending on which one you read, is over 30 percent are unemployed. And some of them are actually unemployable because they have, after a period of looking for job, withdrawn from economic activities. You cannot have security. So rather than look at security as what the formal institutions do, we need to have a broad-based approach, mm -hmm. have what we call a human security understanding of security in the country, which goes to dealing with underlying social problems, underlying economic problems, and giving everybody a sense of belonging. That is what we need to improve security because the formal systems are just like icing that you have on the cake, All but right. the cake needs to be built, which is the informal social control systems that you have across the country that rest on a satisfied citizenry, on an engaged citizenry. Right. But we can't say that our citizens are fully engaged in Nigeria today. Before I let you go, uh, Mr. Chukuma, one of the gains that this administration highlighted, uh, you know, yesterday during the speech is that power supply has been a great, a major, they've made a major progress in that part. Again, you talked about giving opportunity for uh, groundbreakers, giving opportunity to those who add to the economic entrepreneurs and others. And th this group of people would need power supply most of the time to get their businesses going. As a Nigerian again, and even though as a progressive and a visionary Nigerian, would you agree with that statement that yes, we have done so well in terms of electricity and power sector in this country? When they say power sector, the government has done well. The first question you ask, what is the uh, output? We're still talking about 6,000 7,000 uh, 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 kilowatts or what, they, what do they measure it with. When other countries are, that have less population than Nigeria are looking at 40,000, 50,000 in the case of South Africa and also Egypt. This level of production of electricity, if you look at the, uh, the records of the previous government, 
they claim to have achieved that level. So I don't believe that we have the right kind of uh, output that we need to drive a modern economy. We really need to go back to the drawing board. In the privatization program, are there areas or things that needed to have been done that has not been done, which is stifling fresh investment or new investment in that sector? Are there, in terms of distribution, this uh, whole cabling around the country, which they call uh, um, uh, cobwebs, is it efficient in terms of transmitting the full production capacity that we have at this? So there's still a lot to be done. Yes, uh, electricity has improved in some areas, in some neighborhoods, but for the majority of Nigerians, they don't even have access, talk less of quality. We still have millions of Nigerians who are looking for how to get access to electricity through off-grid or through grid uh, supply system that are not getting it. So yes, the government has uh, brought some stability in some areas, but when you assess them uh, through the total uh, quantity of electricity produced in this country, the distribution, the effectiveness and efficiency of distribution, and at the end of the day, the satisfaction of you and I who are the consumer of electricity, uh, a lot still needs to be, be done. All right. Thank you so very much, Mr. Innocent Chukuma, for sharing your thoughts with us this morning. And stay safe out there. Thank you so much for having me.